Hey everybody, welcome back. So today I have a really exciting announcement for you, which is that I made a Max package for sequencing. It's called Rhythm and Time Toolkit, or RTT. Today, this is gonna be a short video. I'm just gonna quickly show you this package, tell you why I did it, show you how to install it, and get you started. And then in the future, we're gonna have way, way, way more videos about this. Um, but let's get started. So uh, basically this project started before even I started making these videos. And in fact, the videos were kind of a way for me to develop the concepts that I was working with in, in my own mind. Sort of by talking about them on the YouTube channel, I was able to work through problems that I had in my own brain. It was funny to make these videos all along while knowing, meanwhile, that I was planning to make this package of Max objects uh, that did many of the things that we talked about on the channel. So you'll find as we get into things here that basically what I have done is create max objects using rainbow that do a lot of what we've talked about. So Euclidean algorithm, the binary beats one, the, uh, the feel swing patch, those are all objects that I've created. And the goal really is to make it very, very easy to build dynamic, playful, interactive sequencers in max without having to do tons of patching, right? If your goal is to make music and your goal is to make interesting music, my hope is that you can take some of these objects and do that quickly and easily and not spend tons of time patching. Of course, patching is super fun. We're definitely gonna talk about patching on this channel and even using this package requires a little bit of patching, but hopefully you'll see as we get in here um, that we've cut some of that down. So let's dive in. So to get started using the package, what you're gonna do is come into Max, open any patch at all, even a blank one, and go to the package manager. The easiest way to get to it is by clicking this cube here on the left hand side of your screen. And then once you're there, just use the search bar and search for rhythm, and you should see it come up here. So this is now live in the package manager and this blue button will say install, click that install button. Once that install process happens, click launch. And that's going to open up for us the package launcher. So this is the home for the package. This is definitely where I recommend starting. And right off the bat, you can see here, we have these gray squares, each of which represents a different object. So there's 20, I believe seven objects that fall into these seven different categories. And each object is a max object. If you click the box, it's going to take you to the help patch for that object. And you can see here, here's the object. If I double click this, it doesn't open. It's not an abstraction. It's a match max object, just like phaser, which this RTT dot clock happens to be sort of a, uh, a sibling of, or, or perhaps you could say a clone of. Um, and I made them all in rainbow. So right here on this front page, we actually have a working sequencer. Kind of a basic one, and we've just got this generic uh, piano sound from the Mac. But you can see here that with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven objects, I've generated a clock, created a little sequence, and sent MIDI out to uh, to the piano sound on my Mac. So when you get into this package, play around here, these categories hopefully are self-explanatory. Basically the way to think of this is we generate clocks, which usually look like phasers. There's also a couple of objects that allow you to take in a clock from a Eurorack system or any kind of modular system. And this upright clock generates kind of a weird type of clock. Definitely recommend playing with that. Clock modifiers do a lot of different things. There's some objects that work a little bit like subdiv. There's also other objects that modulate clocks. So doing things like some of the swing experiments that we've been working with, the timing experiments, even the nested tuplets kind of patch you can find in this category. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's tons of videos on all these things. Of course, you can also dive into the help patches on all of these, and we'll have videos about all these as well. This pattern generator section is where we have things like the Euclidean algorithm video, the binary beats video, and some other cool ideas that I don't think I did videos on, where basically what we're doing is creating 
a set of zeros and ones, basically a, a gate pattern. And then we're just reading that back. And we can read that back with a phaser type of signal, or we could read it back with a counter type of signal that counts like one, two, three, four, five. Sequence generators are pretty much variations on the stash object um, that work a little bit differently. I think, you know, sometimes stash might be the best tool for the job. Sometimes these might be the best tool. One to point out in particular is rtt.notes, which is designed really for the use case where you're working with a list of notes. So perhaps you have a melody and it is designed to work pretty smoothly with kind of my version of M2F, which is called rtt.scala. So there was an M2F video. I think the last video I made was on M2F and how to use Scala in Max. Um, this rtt.scala object does a lot of the same things, plus some extra features, and works very nicely with rtt.notes, giving you the ability to kind of flexibly experiment with different scales and build sequences that use those scales. The event modifier section here, these are objects that basically allow you to add variation and sort of chants and other kinds of interesting uh, embellishments, I guess you could say, to your sequences. Um, for example, rtt.retrig will just retrigger an impulse that it receives. rtt.rprob uh, will allow you to use probability to decide whether or not to allow events to pass through, things like that. Finally, the output section generates MIDI uh, to send MIDI messages out to any gear that you have. Of course, you can use instruments inside of Max and trigger them here, um, but MIDI is great too, and so these objects are kind of like MC.MIDI player, um, but designed specifically for working within this ecosystem. So that's the objects, and that's really the core of the package. Beyond the objects, there's a lot of other stuff that I definitely recommend looking at. So I'm going to move to this pa package extras tab. Um, there are a few things to call out here. So the one in the middle here is a ton of examples. So if you're kind of looking for ideas, trying to figure out how to get started, trying to figure out really what a completed sequencer using these objects looks like, check out some of these examples. Um, and then here on the left, these are pretty useful help patches that are not help patches for specific objects. So every one of these objects has a health patch. It also has a reference, like a real max object. But these help patches are sort of help for the entire package. And there's a few things in particular I want to point out. So one is the snippets, which I'm going to open here. And Snippets are a max thing that I have only used a little bit, but I found really, really useful in building this package. So normally if you're in max and you have a little bit of patching that you don't want to have to rebuild all the time and you use it a lot. So for example, it's an object maybe with a bunch of um, arguments already defined or a bunch of pre-connected patching. For example, this rtt.clock tilde with its outer UIs and a little scope. Um, you can save this little bit of patching as a snippet. And I've created snippets for all of the RTT objects. So to make patching, basically, really quick and fast, I definitely recommend using these. And the way that you get them, you can see them all here in this uh, rtt.help.snippets file, which you can get to from the package launcher like I just did. But you can also get any single one of these by coming over here to this snippets menu. We'll go save view by name, and you can see there's a, a category here, Rhythm and Time Toolkit, and then you can see all of them. So you can just drag in to your patch that snippet, and now you have it, and now you're able to use that. One great thing about these is the outer UIs and all the UI elements, they all have uh, scripting names, so they're ready to go if you want to use the patter system to store, store presets with these. So it's not just about cutting down the amount of you know, adding objects to the patch, but it really will help um, shortcut some of the processes that you might need to do to actually be able to use presets with your patches. So that's the snippets. And then the second thing is the modules, which are similar. I guess the way you could think of these are like snippets on steroids. They're just bigger and more elaborate snippets. So these are abstractions. 
uh, in little bee patchers. And inside of each one is one of these RTT objects, and then a nicer UI, and then again, pattern support. So for example, we have um, rtt.binary, and we can generate these patterns, and it gives us a pretty nice little UI. So there's one for pretty much all of the objects, except for a few where it just didn't make sense um, because they didn't really have any attributes. Um, but yeah, this is another way to patch. I'd say play around with both of these and see how it goes. And again, pattern system is very well supported here. So in fact, if I, um, if I just create a pattern storage object here and I give it the, um, the argument greedy one, and then I double click it, you can see that every single one of these modules, I call them, that are in the patch exist and we can see the parameters for all of them. So it makes it really, really quick and easy to be able to store scenes or presets or whatever you want to call them and just speed up the process of making music with this system, which is really the goal. Uh, I'll definitely talk more about modules. There's a lot of smaller features in there in a future video. The final thing that I want to talk about is some resources. So first and foremost, obviously videos on this channel. So this is the first one, introduction to the package, but there's definitely going to be many, many more. So stay tuned here. I've also launched a Discord server, and this is there's nobody in it at the time of recording except me. So I'd love it if you'd come and join me there. Um, anybody can join, and that's a place to talk about this project, talk about this thing in general of um, sequencing with signals in Max. And Rhizomic is uh, borrowed from the book A Thousand Plateaus. Uh, this kind of uh, <laughs> like pretty weird philosophy book where they talk about the idea of like a uh, a mycelial fungus network of interconnected things, uh, which is kind of what the sequencers that we're building here look like. Rather than being kind of linear and straight and tracked, they're more web-like and network-like. Uh, so that was the idea there. So yeah, join the uh, Discord server. You can find the link here inside the package. I'll also put it in the link description to the video. Um, and... I'm also going to launch a Patreon. So this is the first time I've announced that. There's nobody in there yet at the time of recording as well, but I hope you will join me there. My goal really is to make that worthwhile to you, the people that support me. Um, and I have a lot of ideas about ways that we can do that. Definitely there's going to be some special content, uh, video content, some special patches. There's a solid chance that there will be some extra RTT components, maybe some beta early access beta components, uh, for example, like some special modules um, that are available to Patreon supporters. And I'm also thinking, and let me know in the description below what you think of this idea of doing kind of like a bi-weekly maybe or monthly office hours type of thing where we get on the phone, we'll have maybe a couple sessions in different time zones get on a Zoom call and just let everybody talk and ask questions um, during that time. I think that'd be really fun, number one, um, and a cool way to just, you know, develop our ideas collectively around this thing and build our um, build our community. So let me down know down below in the comments if there's anything in terms of benefits that's really attractive to you uh, as you think about becoming a Patreon supporter. Um, it's important to me that it's valuable to you. Um, if if you become a supporter. So let me know what would be interesting. Uh, final thing is just a thanks. There's a bunch of you in here. Um, I mean, your enthusiasm about this stuff, your questions, your interest, your ideas have been so, so motivating and so helpful through this process. A lot of the small ideas that a lot of you have had um, have actually found their way into this package. And I know that some of you actually have worked directly kind of behind the scenes, helping me beta test this thing uh, and, and generate some ideas. So I really appreciate the help from all of you um, and from kind of many other people who, who help with this. Um, so that's it for today. Get in the package manager, install that thing. Stay tuned for future videos. Let me know in the comments um, what you think of the package. 
and let me know about the Patreon stuff and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.